Hello, Steeler Nation, and welcome to your Steeler Nation podcast, sponsored by Total Sports Enterprises. I'm your host, G Stryker, and today I'm joined by a writer for the Boston Globe who covers the New England Patriots to go over some matchups for this week's game. I am happy to introduce Christopher Price. Chris, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm much better that I can do some fun stuff now. But I uh, wanted to go over some of the injuries that we saw going on. We hear that Mac Jones has a back injury. Practice fully, I know, on Wednesday. Is there? Um, can you tell us what type of injury this is, and is there any reason for concern? Well, right now the team is telling us it's back spasms, and so I don't think there's a long-term reason for concern. Although I will say this, that you know as well as I do, back things can be an issue on and off. And so I, I think that certainly bears – at least watching moving forward, but I don't think it's going to be a huge impact when you're talking about Sunday's game in Pittsburgh. And then I did hear he also had an upset stomach and was a little ill yesterday. Steeler Nation likes to think that it was because he was going over game film of the Steelers defense (laughs) from the previous week. Can you tell us a little bit about that? No, yeah, I I think it was a bug, nothing more. So I I, I don't think it's it's a huge thing, at least at this point. I don't think it's going to be a huge impact when it comes to Sunday. Well, how do you think that Mac jo- uh, is going to attack the Steelers' new pressure defense with now improved secondary play? Well, I think there's going to be a couple things at play. First, you're going to be able to really one of the things that they tried to do with the start of the Miami game, I think they're going to try and do uh, an awful lot, and maybe more so when you talk about the Steelers. I think they're going to try and run the ball. They're going to try and run the ball an awful lot. Uh, Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson, they were able to pick up good, consistent yardage in the early going, obviously. Yeah when things kind of got out of hand a little bit for them in the second half, they had to throw, they got away from the run. But I think a perfect Patriots game plan would involve a lot of running of the ball, slowing the game down, being able to lean on those guys. And and then also looking for some of the options uh, in the passing game, not a lot of deep options in the passing game, but some of the options in the passing game, Jacoby Myers, who has really done a really good job distinguishing himself as Mac Jones, number one target in the passing game. Johnny Smith put together a really impressive performance, at least by his standards, in the opener against Miami. When they do take those shots downfield, the guy to look for is probably Devontae Parker. The one X factor, I know we're going to get to this in a bit, but the one X factor here really is Kendrick Bourne. He only played two snaps in the opener, caught one pass for 41 yards. He is a, when he's on the field, he's a deep threat. And so he's another guy to look for when they do try and stretch the defense, look for Kendrick Bourne. And I'll tell you, I did love the way that uh, Ty Montgomery and his effort on that touchdown pass when he fell down short of the end zone, but was still smart enough to log roll into the end zone. Um, he seems like an up and coming player as well for you guys and making some great plays. Yeah, I, I will. Say, I will say this. He he is. He did suffer an injury, so he's not going to play oh, wow. this week. Yeah. Okay. So so he's a, he's really. I think Ty Montgomery is a really intriguing puzzle piece here because I think in a lot of ways, if you remember Cordero Patterson when he was with the Patriots a couple of years ago, I think right. they're trying to use him in a lot of the same ways, kind of a running back, a wide receiver, special teams, hybrid. So I think when he is on the field, I think he is he does an awful lot for the New England offense, but he's not going to play this week. So with the way that the New England is balancing their offense, it seems like a pretty balanced attack. Do you think their identity is going to stay like Bill Belichick likes to do as a balanced attack, or is this more of a running team this year? It's a little bit more of a running team, at least at this point. But it, but you bring up a really good point that I think really, you know, one, two games into the season, in the post-Tom Brady era, they're still looking for a bit of an offensive identity here. I, I think that, you know, because they've done some shuffling, they're still trying to figure out what they're really good at and maybe what they want to minimize. I think right now, again, a perfect offensive game plan for them would involve more running than passing, leaning on guys like Harris, leaning on guys like Stevenson, kind of augmenting that with a shorter intermediate passing game. So if I had to choose between the two right now, I'd say they're a bit more of a running team, but I wouldn't be surprised to see that evolve and change and kind of you know, shuffle over the course of the, the 2022 season. And we also saw Jawan Bentley didn't practice. He had a toe injury. Is this looking like it's going to be a serious injury for him this week? No, no, it's okay, not good. looking like it's going to be a serious injury. I imagine he may take an extra, you know, a, a series or two off here or there. But Bentley is a guy in the middle who is important to what they want to get done defensively. I think he's going to play. And Steeler Nation knows Judon well from his time in Baltimore, and he looks to be a force again this year, especially since he had, what, 12 sacks, I think, for you last year. Um, Who else should the Steelers fans be aware of this weekend when the Steelers are trying to run their offense? 
I'll give you a couple names. Uh, Kyle Duggar, young safety out of Lenore Ryan, who had a really good rookie year, had a very impressive season season opener against the Dolphins. I think he's very, very important to what they want to get done defensively. He's a he's a safety who plays a little bit more like a linebacker, bigger, oversized safety. That's one of the points of emphasis the Patriots had this past offseason. They wanted to get faster on defense. So instead of, you know, kind of re-signing guys like Dante Hightower and bigger, older, plotting linebackers, they went and they really put the emphasis on getting guys like Duggar and kind of building around him. Uh, you know, they, they have Jabril Peppers. They have those those yeah. types of ball players. Uh, and Duggar is probably the best of the bunch right now. The other guy who I think had a good offseason, had a good preseason, and had a sack in the opener against Tua, Tua um, was Dietrich Wise, uh, who was able to get good pressure off the edge. He, he's a really good complementary player when you talk about you know, pressure off the other side from Judon. Judon has been able to get good, consistent pressure pretty much yeah. over the course of his Patriots career. But yeah. Wise offers a really good complementary piece on that other side. One more name for you. Up front, Christian Barmore, a young yeah. defensive lineman out of Alabama, had a really good rookie year, looking to build on that this year. Put together some pretty good performances. He's another guy to watch. Thank you so much, Chris. We really appreciate your time. Steeler Nation, you can follow Chris over at C Price Globe, C P R I C E G L O B E, at that location on Twitter. We'll have it up on our page as well. And he's part of the at Believe Network at B L E A V uh, Network. And that is part with Cordell Stewart. We know Ike Taylor all have shows over there. So we really thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And I, I know you're going to be rooting for your our teams this weekend, but I'll leave you with this. Cheers then, Chris. May the game be competitive and the injuries be few. Enjoy the game. I love it. Take care, and we'll talk again soon. It sounds great. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Steel Nation, make sure you check out my bookie, mybookie.ag, and use promo code Steeler Nation. So if you start a new account, you get to double your deposit initially. Put in 250 bucks, boom, you have 500 in your account. You're already good at betting. So go to mybookie.ag. Use promo code Steeler Nation to double up your deposit today. And big news, obviously, Steeler Nation was TJ Watt. The good news for it was that even though he was placed on IR, it looks like the pectoral injury was in the upper region. They said there's no bruising to the back or the shoulder area. The tendons are intact, which means no surgery. He's going to be ready to roll in four to six weeks. Uh, hopefully, and the one good thing that I noticed too from being a physical trainer at University of Maryland in Baltimore County was when he hurt his pectoral, the range of motion, he was laying on the ground after missing the initial sack on Joe Burrow, came down, reached behind his own head like this to grab Joe Burrow's, kind of hook Joe Burrow's leg while he's on the ground and pull down this way. That's a range of motion you never make in the NFL. So that's probably the way he, why he injured it because he's so strong, rarely makes that range of motion and working out. And we probably don't have to worry about re-injury once we enter back into the season. Now, the interesting aspect, the Steelers went out and poached somebody off of somebody else's practice squad for once. Like we had Roche poached off, off of ours. We went down to Tennessee and we grabbed a new guy named David Anini for an undrafted rookie free agent from University of Houston. So I know that's going to make our Cooley man smile here in a University of Houston product coming in uh, for the Steelers. But Anini had three sacks and two forced fumbles in the preseason. So I'm sure that caught the eye of the Steelers uh, league scouts. Uh, he had last season in his final season at Houston, he had 10 tackles for a loss, five sacks, Two passes defense, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, while earning first team all conference honors. Now, Cooley Man also noted at Steeler Nation Football Forum, and he's our resident professional, uh, Houston, everything Houston Cougars, he's on top of it. But what he said is this guy is athletic, he's quick as hell. He had a solid season last year for the Cougs and flashed some skill in the preseason for the Titans. Going into the draft, I expected him to be an undrafted rookie free agent or a very late pick. He is talented enough, but pretty raw in his moves. He relies a lot on his speed, but is strong enough for the position, and he chases the plays to the whistle. So that's what we like to hear. A high-intensity guy, high effort, high motor, that's going to play hard for the Steelers, and he's already fast. Can't teach speed. So Steelers love their fast edge guys. Case in point, 
Alex Highsmith with the light turning on, getting three sacks week one when it took him 10 weeks to get three sacks last year. I'm looking forward to Highsmith carrying it for us then this year. Steeler Nation, it is now questions. Time for questions from Steeler Nation, sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, so guys, you want to come out and make sure that your balls are taken care of and the, have the ball security, kind of like Najee last year with never fumbling balls once. Manscaped will take care of your balls as well. So whether you need the Performance Package 4.0 lawnmower trimmer, it's a weed whacker, ear, nose, and, uh, and, and hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop receiver, toner, performance, boxer briefs, travel bag, anything you want from these guys, when you got to take care of down there, Manscaped is the group for you. So be sure to pop on over to Manscaped. Dot com use promo code Steeler Nation. What do you get? You get 20% off your order, you get free shipping, so your balls are going to be taken care of way quicker than you thought they would. So go on over to manscaped.com, promo code Steelers, get that 20% off, and have the most protected balls on the planet. First question from Steeler Nation going over to Steeler Nation uh football forum at steelernation.com. That's where we take our questions each week. It's free to join. Jump on there if you would like to get your questions asked. First question from Matt Insomniac. In your opinion, why have the last 16 quarterbacks that lost in their Super Bowl debut never made it back? That's a really interesting thing to think about, Matt, and it's something I never did. Um, I, I know um, we went down through those um, quarterbacks. We're talking about Garoppolo. Goff, Ryan, uh, Cam Newton, Kaepernick, Grossman, Hasselback, McNabb, Delhomme, Gannon, Collins, McNair, Chandler, Bledsoe when he was not a starter, when he was the backup, and O'Donnell and Humphreys. So quite a list of players there. But here's my two points on that one, Mad. I think it's just extremely difficult to make it to the Super Bowl in general. Many factors are involved. You've got injuries, you have turnovers, you have bad luck, bad matchups. You know, McNabb is a good one to point to, to tell you the truth, because his teams were excellent. I mean, they made five NFC championship games, but only made it to the Super Bowl once. And that team was good enough to win Super Bowls. They had an excellent defense. They had a great running back and receivers. And Andy Reid was their freaking head coach, for gosh sakes. But still, just come down to bad luck sometimes because it's difficult to make it to the last game. Uh, some of these teams also get to the game where they shouldn't like a huge upset in the championship game. Like Humphreys had against the Steelers with San Diego, uh, Delhomme Cap Cap and uh, Kaepernick beat the better teams that year. Much like new England back in 85, when they beat the 80, when they beat the Miami dolphins going into that super bowl for the 85 bears. And then that super bowl was a laugher. Same thing with San Diego. That super bowl was a laugher. There's a team that shouldn't have been there, but upsets happen. And it creates a tougher matchup then for them in the next round. Some teams can get through it. Some teams are just playing better at the end of the year than their record indicates. See the 05 Steelers, but it's just tough. It's just tough at those times. And lastly, we have the era of the franchise quarterback that was a factor. So unless your name is Brady, Manning, even Roethlisberger, and now Mahomes, you have a tough chance of making the Super Bowl if you're not one of those players because you had to go through one, two, maybe three of those quarterbacks at some times in the AFC to try to even make it to a Super Bowl. So lots of factors on reasons why we don't make the Super Bowl every year and why those specific quarterbacks never made it back. Uh, Zonerberg, will Bush so th show the splash in his contract year like he showed in his rookie year? And he, he needs to, Zona. I mean, it's his last chance to get paid, and if he doesn't put up great numbers this season, he will be forever an NFL journeyman making a low salary. So he looked pretty good in the last game. He was doing a lot of the small things right. Uh, so fingers crossed that Bush is going to continue to do well because we need the inside linebacker pr play to be stellar while we're waiting for TJ Watt to come back. Uh, Ike Kelly with the next question. Would be keenly interested in striker sources if they knew Bradshaw reached out first by Art Rooney too about the Immaculate Reception jersey retirement, and he declined. Brad still has this weird relationship with, Bradshaw still has this weird relationship with the franchise slash city. Now, I haven't heard at all, um, Ike, about 
Bradshaw even being a factor or communicated for getting his jersey retired. I know he has some issues with uh, Chuck Knoll. Um, he doesn't return to the city often. I'm sure his relationship with the Roonies is also a little iffy. But, you know, there, there's also no statue of Bradshaw at the airport throwing the Immaculate Prayer while being clocked because it's Franco's play because he made it. I mean, Bradshaw was trying to hit um, Frenchie Fuqua down the field and ended up hitting Tatum and Fuqua at the same time. So Franco was the one that made that play. Bradshaw put the ball in the air, but if it wasn't for Franco picking up a ball that would have hit the ground and turned the fortunes of the franchise by metaphorically stealing the victory from the claws of defeat and did it for the entire 40 years of the franchise leading up to that moment. That was their first playoff win. Such an impactful game on the most improbable play ever to win it. And that is why Franco should only be seen and is mostly seen as the savior because it was his heady play being at the right place at the right time and then finishing the run to get into the end zone that gave the Steelers that victory, changing the fortunes of the always losing playoff Pittsburgh Steelers to the always winning Super Bowl champions now with six. So, yeah, I, I don't see uh, Bradshaw being an issue for that as well. Uh, Cooley man, um, not Steeler related, but what do you think of Lovey Smith's decision to punt on fourth and three from midfield with 20 seconds left in overtime? Um, I'll tell you this, Cooley man. It, you have certain coaches that just play too conservatively. Steelers don't have that coach. Mike Tomlin would go for it in that situation 10 out of 10 times. That's one of the reasons why I love Mike Tomlin. Now, when you play not to lose, you just can't win. And you've got coaches like Norv Turner, Herm Edwards, and right here, Lovey Smith living in their fears, worrying about what happens if they don't make the play. You got to try to make a play if you're trying to win games. If you don't, you don't win. And that is what you get paid for in the NFL is to win football games. So Steeler Nation, that's all the time I've got on the podcast. Go on over, guys. We got the terrible tailgate going on over in Lot A. 40 bucks, all you can eat and drink. We got a DJ there. We have four-time Super Bowl champion tight end Randy Grossman there signing autographs, hanging out with us. Lot 5A, starting at 8 a.m., sponsored by Steeler Nation itself here. So We'll see you in the morning. I will be over there as well. Come on over and say hi to me and let's talk some football. And uh, make sure you check out our great Steelers items going on. Um, we also wanted to talk about MyBookie one last time. Make sure to go over to MyBookie.com. Use promo code SteelerNation, one word, all caps, to double your deposit. Make some money on these bets today. I made some money on that, on that Cincinnati game. I thought they were going to flat out win. Not the way they did but they did win. So I got some money. You can too. Mybookie.ag, guys. Make sure you check out our sponsor, Total Sports Enterprises at tseshop.com. Follow their Twitter at Total Sports ENT to win free jersey. They give away stuff during the game. Give away jerseys every week. Get on it, Steeler Nation, at Total Sports ENT on Twitter. Uh, follow the vidcast. It'll be Tuesdays, usually 7 p.m. live. So if you're subscribing to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Steeler Nation, you will get an indication every time we're up and rolling. You'll be able to reply to us on YouTube and on Facebook, but Twitter, you just have to sit there and watch. Read our great Pittsburgh Steeler focused articles at SteelerNation.com. Tweet us at Steeler Nation. Instagram us at SteelerNation.com. Follow the podcast on Twitter at underscore SN Podcast, or follow me, your host, Steeler Nation Striker at SN Striker on Instagram, on Twitter, on Tickety Talk. One of these days I'll be able to get to post to it again, but looking forward to interacting with you there as well. That is all the time we have on the Steeler Nation podcast sponsored by Total Sports Enterprises. I'm your host, G Striker, rooting along with you as always. Go Steelers!